Well, hello everyone. Today we will talk about this 3D cursor. 3D cursor was once by just left clicking you are moving it like I'm doing now, but that was inconvenient for uh, industry users, uh, especially who used the uh, Autodesk products like uh, 3ds Max, Maya, or else. It was a little bit weird to select stuff by right clicking, which is. Here is Blender 2.41. It was the first version that I have ever used in my life. It back then in 2006, and I didn't use it uh, till 2017. Once I used the 2.76, and then I got to 2.8, and from then I began to use Blender for my work. So as you can see, that right clicking is selecting stuff and left clicking is moving the cursor maybe some blender users still uh, going with the left clicking stuff but now if we are going to say that we are in industry compatible you press c and it will be used as a different tool that you can move even smoothly not by clicking like that which was once you drag it it does rotate <laughs> the cube it was it was very weird and this way of controlling things was a little bit obnoxious but here it is quite simple you just click here or just to check your shortcut if you are using any key mapping and they drag it like that so we are going to check this with the industry compatible shortcuts let's see what 3d cursor can do first you can snap it to the corners like that and uh, what it does, you can make the pivot, which is here, the transform pivot point to the 3D cursor. What does that do? That means that you can uh, rotate around the 3D cursor instead of the original uh, object that you are using, uh, pivot. Okay, so that is quite convenient in some cases that uh, you want to rotate something on something or uh, as we are going to see now so if i draw a cube that has a random scale like that and once you grab this 3d cursor to this and move it to the cor uh, corner that happens it does snap to the closest point which what we don't want in most cases you are using center for moving your objects around so you are going to have your center along the pivot point of the 3d cursor so it will move to any point that you select by the 3d cursor like that so this is one of the moves that i actually do once i navigate through my cad model what if i want to scale this box to match this edge well in that case you will activate closest and activate the scale or rotate we will see that then you go to scale and snap it to that by pressing control in industry compatible key map i don't have an idea if it's the same in blender shortcuts or not but you can activate it uh, indefinitely by just clicking on that or pressing x like that to toggle the snap you can just uh, hover and see the shortcut if you don't know it uh, so uh, that's the uh, idea of the 3d cursor scaling it is quite convenient in my opinion uh, the snapping in general in blender is a little bit not so convenient as i'm saying but uh, the idea is that you have uh, if you got used to it you you may do uh, many things just as fast as the CAD modeling tools that we use like SketchUp or Revit or whatever so here it is and the same goes for the rotation you can rotate things along the faces as you see uh, let's uh, try to have a special rotation that I don't know for example if I have a face like that uh, will it rotate uh, with the same concept let's see so here we go and i will rotate this well not so well <laughs> because the cursor isn't pivoted correctly here it is you can make a rotation snap 
but you have to activate closest in that case to activate the uh, rotation snap uh, correctly so you can snap your objects along the rotation but you have to keep the closest point uh, to be the last thing is that you rotate but if you have some case like that and you got to rotate that it will rotate this face because this is the closest point here so uh, you have to rotate it uh, normally like that and then rotate it uh, along the faces uh, okay you, you have to make it closer and then snap the rotation I, I know that uh, snapping uh, needs some work in blender in general but it, it, it is not a big deal uh, you can get used to it uh, once you use it too much so uh, if we are going into local so we can scale this to the edge let's try that yeah that does the trick then you can apply everything by applying all transforms or um, just uh, scale and rotation. There is apply scale and rotation or rotation at the scale. And I actually added to my quick favorite, which you can call this menu by pressing Q in Blender shortcuts and in industry compatible shift tap. And it will call this quick favorites menu. That is quite nice. So. Uh, what else can 3D Cursor do? It does many things as we have agreed uh, because you can go to edit mode for example and do this spinning uh, tool here and it spins around the 3D Cursor. So 3D Cursor decides uh, many things and one of these things is deciding the orientation of the added objects. Quite weird, right? You can decide that by clicking on here and instead of orientation view you will keep it orientation geometry so it will have the normal of the geometries that you are clicking on instead of uh, just uh, making it uh, view oriented uh, which is the normal case but if we added an object right now it does nothing it just places the object to the center of the 3d cursors that we have but if you gone here you will have a line a line does have some options like view and 3d cursor 3d cursor does a line along the normal and sometimes you may need this to be activated by default it depends on what you are uh, getting used to but uh, you can just keep it by default by going to edit preferences and to go to the editing you will find new objects and you will have link materials to object data or object and you have also align to align to gives you the opportunity to keep the default uh, alignment to the 3d cursor and also you can keep it in edit mode if you want uh, the newly added object to be edited right away without uh, going into the edit mode by just pressing one which is a little bit lazy to uh, activate the edit mode by just adding a new object mm. It is just a press of a button. That's the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe because the next video will be about how to import the 3D models from external programs like SketchUp or Revit and visualize them as it has to be using the Blender powers. Thanks for watching.